A lot of beekeepers have questions about the entrance. They don't know uh, what opening they should use, whether it should be a large opening or a small opening. They're not sure when to take this off. They're not sure when to use this when you install a new package or a nucleus. They're not sure when to use this particular mouse guard or this particular mouse guard. And today I wanted to look at this and I wanna show you how these all fit into the front of the hive. And I wanna talk about what time of the year you should use these, what settings they should be to help your bees have less of an opening to guard and also a wider opening for better honey production. Let's get right into it today. Now, this is your typical entrance reducer and it usually has two openings. It has uh, anywhere from a three to a five inch opening here. And usually this is about a three quarter of an inch opening. Now these are the traditional entrance reducers. So in the case where you just install a package, most of us suggest putting it on the small opening as you see here. Sometimes you have to uh, lift up the deep box a little bit and put it there. But on this hive in particular, this particular bottom board comes already with these types of entrance reducers. This is the type of bottom board that we sell. And as you can see here, there's openings. And so you can choose whether to block it completely off with all three of these in these openings, or you can actually create a mouse guard by flipping it over and then putting it in the slots like this, and mice can't get in, but bees can still come and go. And since there's three openings, you can choose which of the three that you would rather use um, or keep one open. So oftentimes a beekeeper may only want to open, may only open a portion of the opening like this over here. Now, in case you're using a traditional like solid bottom board, not this particular uh, bee smart bottom board, you may use the traditional entrance uh, reducer that looks like this. And in this case, you can put it in there and set it the way you want it, either a large opening or rotate it. Now, if you're uh, installing packages, uh, for the first time, then you want it on your smaller opening like as you see here. In this smaller opening, you want to be sure and make sure the bees aren't going to abscond. A lot of times we tell beekeepers to actually put some grass gently in an opening and when you first install your package. That way the bees start moving the grass out of the way and they get used to being in the hive. And then once the hive gets more established and there's a honey flow, then you want to take advantage of this larger opening. But it has two options. The larger opening can be upside down like this, where the bees have to kind of almost step up a little bit. Or you can flip it over where the bees can simply walk out. Now in this configuration where the opening is facing the bottom board, I think it would be easier for the bees to remove dead bees. Uh, when bees die in the summer, they take those bees out. And so sometimes they have to drag them. It might be a little bit more difficult for them to drag them over this little lip of um, a quarter of an inch or something. So I prefer to keep that like this. Now, sometimes I do feel that it is um, fine to leave it upside down. I've even thought at times that it does seem to cut down on anything walking into the hive when it's in this configuration. And I think bees have no problem at all dragging dead sisters over the top of it. So it's just kind of a personal preference that you might decide which one that you want to use. Now, if you've watched many of my videos, you know that this is the technique I like to do. I actually like opening my entrance reducer about like this, where I keep this whole section here from this corner to a little over halfway completely open. You can use this side like this, and that way uh, there's a little opening if you want them to, to walk through, or they can just climb over that board. But many of my hives are set up this way. I've had really good luck leaving it open uh, a little bit. Now, some of you might say during a honey flow, take it off because bees need to go in and out as fast as they can, and as many bees as possible. That may be a good philosophy to keep it open during a strong honey flow because, man, when you see those bees working hard, Indeed, they are just moving in and out so fast that if you restrict them, we oftentimes think it could restrict the honey flow. However, I have removed many colonies from a lot of homes and buildings 
where all the bees had was a little bit of broken mortar between some bricks, maybe just a tiny little gap somewhere, and yet they put comb after comb after comb filled with honey. So bees aren't going to be really set back that much if you continue to hold the entrance reduced during a honey flow. They can navigate around that, believe me. Also, reducing the entrance all year long, like I said, may have benefits to keep things out like wasp or small high beetle, uh, wax moss uh, flying in. It won't prevent it, but I think it would give the guard bees less of an area to protect. In the wide open area like we see here, uh, these, the guard bees are going to be protecting this entire 13 or 14 inches across. But if we were to reduce it uh, significantly, like I said, rotating this out just a little bit like this, uh, let's see, I would probably do it like that, then that means that the guard bees are just going to be guarding this half of the area down there. So they're going to be a little bit more precise in who gets in the front of the hive, while still allowing plenty of room for the bees to access going in and out. And over here on our Be Smart Plastic Hive, you can do the same thing as well. You can leave these completely off for maximum uh, in and out coverage of the bottom board. The bees just have the ability to fly in and out of all openings if you take all three of these off. Or again, you can flip these upside down to close it off or to have the mouse guard. Now let's talk about a mouse guard. Many of you probably uh, are new to beekeeping if you're watching my channel. Thank you for watching. And if you uh, would please subscribe and give me a thumbs up, thumbs up, I'd appreciate it. But this is a typical mouse guard. Now this mouse guard that I'm going to show you, it's a metal one, but it actually has holes in it for the bees to be able to go in and out. But it appears that they're small enough to keep the mice out. Mice are a problem in the fall, in the winter, and early spring. And so by placing these mouse guards on a hive like this, and you can screw them down, they have little screw holes, then the bees are able to still go in and out, even carry their dead sisters out after winter, but it keeps the mice from taking over your hive. So a mouse guard is always a, a big help as well. And there's many types of mouse guards that you can see. Here's another one that's a plastic one. This one, of course, is adjustable. And what does this mean when it's adjustable? Well, it means if you have an A-frame hive, you can adjust it to the small setting. Or an odd-shaped hive, you can <laughs> adjust it to fit it. Or in our case, uh, let's see, if we open it all the way up, is that going to fit in here? That's a little too big. So we can adjust that for this 10-frame uh, somewhere. So put it in position and then slide the, the edge of the wings out so they fit perfectly. And then you can use, a, usually we use something like a thumbtack to thumbtack it to the deep box. Now, once you get it in position, and you can see here that bees can go in and out, but it will again keep mice from coming in and out of the hive. Now, another thing that I wanna show you that is really important, and this is both a mouse guard and a robber screen. Now, if you're new to beekeeping, or if you're you know, one to five year beekeeper, you may have not experienced your hive being robbed out yet. If you haven't experienced that, let me tell you, you're gonna cry when your hive gets robbed out by a stronger, more populated hive. These are really nice, and I've shown you guys videos before, but you can see it fits on the entrance like this, and it has little doors at the top. Now, these little doors at the top will swing open, and there's openings here where the bees will go in and out of these openings, your bees. The robber bees come because they smell the scent of the hive. And they smell it down here. They try to get in down here, but they can't figure out how to do it. Your bees navigating in and out here uh, are just fine. Also, uh, mice may have more difficulty finding where the opening is as well, so it could be a beneficial mouse guard as well. It comes with a thumbtack, it's very nice, and I really think it's something you should be using in the fall to actually discourage robbing from ever starting, because once robbing starts, it is just about impossible to stop. Now these also will fit nicely onto this particular hive as well. And they have uh, grooves where they will snap down in there, but it, it will work really well on this particular plastic bottom board as well. Now, while we're on the subject of the entrance, I, want, I do wanna talk about the bottom board uh, just very quickly. This particular bottom board that we now carry, I do like it a lot. 
My bottom boards that are wooden bottom boards, after a few years, they really do take a beating because they're the closest to the ground. They're the closest to the moisture. And so I really do like a plastic one because I don't have to worry about it dying in the weather. It comes with a little plastic board that you can slide in and out. This is nice in case you're someone who feels like you want to close up your hive during the winter time. Then you can simply just slide this in and close off the screen bottom board. Or you can split the difference and keep it half open or a little bit opening. Now, some people may still want to test for mites by putting a little bit of um, Vaseline or something on here and insert it back in and see what kind of mite drop that you get. The reason why we no longer feel that's an effective and accurate mite count is because if you do that, you don't know how many bees above were in the hive at the time that you received that many dropped mites. There's really no way, or, no, no way to compare that, where if you do an alcohol wash or a powdered sugar dusting, uh, then you can know that you're testing a certain amount of bees, and from that certain amount, that's how many mites you got. But when you do a mite drop with a sticky board, you really don't have a lot of good data to feed back to you exactly uh, what kind of mite counts you have. So I'm not a real fan of sticky boards. It was in the beginning, but not anymore. There's much ac more accurate ways to do it. But I do like this board where I can adjust it uh, to actually open it up more for ventilation or close it off if I need to, if it's a small hive going through the winter. Or if you're treating your bees and the treatment method requires you to have a closed bottom board and you have a screen bottom board, well then you can save this board and you can easily slide it in during treatment to get the best coverage and use of the treatment for my control. We do have these available. Check out our website at honeybeesonline.com. I wanted to get you guys familiar with the different kinds of entrances that you'll be facing during the year. Now, if you'd like to see how to inspect a hive, I've got a lot of videos on how to inspect. A lot of you might be new. I've got a video right here that will help you learn how to inspect your hive. I'll see you over there.